In this video, we're going to do a second example problem involving conservation of mechanical energy. Conservation of mechanical energy says that if you have a process where only conservative forces act, then the combination of kinetic energy and potential energy during that process is a constant. The kinetic energy of an object is equal to one half the mass of the object times the square of the speed. So far, the only form of potential energy I have introduced you to is gravitational potential energy. Here's how we use gravitational potential energy. We start by introducing a zero level. An object at the zero level has a gravitational potential energy of zero. An object, which is at a height h above the zero level, has a gravitational potential energy equal to its mass times the free fall acceleration multiplied by the height of the object above the zero level. One way of formulating the conservation of mechanical energy is to say that if we have a process where only conservative forces act, then the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy is zero. And if the gravitational force is the only force acting, then change in kinetic energy plus change in gravitational potential energy equals zero. So here's the example problem. We have a situation where there is a pulley supported at the ceiling, and we have a string going over the pulley. One end of the string goes all the way down to a mass M1 here, which is sitting on the floor. Then that string goes over the pulley and then down to a mass M2, which is at a height H above the floor. Now, mass one is the lighter of the two masses. Mass two is the heavier of the two masses. So when we look at this picture here, where mass two is way up here and mass one is sitting on the ground, we assume that there is something which is holding the system in place. Now, what's gonna happen when that thing holding the system in place releases? Well, what's going to happen is that mass two, the heavier mass is gonna start to move down. Mass one, the lighter mass is gonna get pulled up. And then a little bit later, we're going to have a situation where mass two has almost reached the floor. So just a tiny moment later, mass two is gonna hit the floor. And in the meanwhile, mass one here is going upward. We would like to find how fast are the mass is going immediately before mass two hits the floor. And we know because of the way the two masses are connected with the string that at this moment, the two masses will be moving at the same speed. We're going to do this problem using the same handout I introduced you to in the previous example problem using conservation of mechanical energy. So let's just dive in. We have step 1a, draw diagrams illustrating the initial and final situations. And you can see that I already did that. I labeled these initial and final. Step 1b, set the zero level for gravitational potential energy. In this problem, it makes sense to put the zero level for gravitational potential energy down here at the floor. And when I do that, we're going to see that sometimes the gravitational potential energies of particular masses turn out to be zero, which simplifies things. And in other cases, the gravitational potential energies will be positive. So we are at least avoiding minus signs that we don't need. So let's set the zero level here. Okay, so that was step one. Step two, we have option A, if all forces acting are conservative. Step B, if non-conservative forces act. So we want to look at what's going on here and see if there are any non-conservative forces acting. So we have gravity acting, right? Because it is gravity which pulls mass two downward so that mass one can then begin to move upward. So we know gravity is acting. The only other force that we need to think about would be the tension in the string. Now that tension in the string is actually a non-conservative force. However, what's going to happen here is that as mass one is being pulled upward, the tension is doing positive work on mass one. And then as mass two is going downward, the tension will be pulling the other way. So tension will do negative work on mass two. The total work done by tension between mass one and mass two 
will be zero. So because the total work done by tension is zero, it can be neglected for the purposes of mechanical energy conservation. Okay. So to sum up, we have gravity acting, that's a conservative force. We have tension in there, but we don't need to worry about it. So we're going to use option A here, which says if all forces are conservative, and if all forces are conservative, we write out expressions for gravitational potential energy, spring potential energy, and kinetic energy for both initial and final situations. There are no springs in this problem. So we're just going to work out initial and final expressions for gravitational potential and kinetic energies. Okay, so we want kinetic energy initial, gravitational potential energy initial, Kinetic energy final, gravitational potential energy final. Now here, I would encourage you to pause the video and try filling these out on your own, but I'm going to give you one note of caution here. It is tempting when you fill these out to focus on one mass or the other. But what we do in energy conservation is a bit different. When we do energy conservation, each of these expressions has to be written so as to include the contributions of all of the masses in your system. So initial kinetic energy will be initial kinetic energy of mass one plus initial kinetic energy of mass two. Initial gravitational potential will be initial gravitational potential of one plus initial gravitational potential of two and so forth. So pause the video. Fill those out as well as you can, and then rejoin the video. Okay, so initial kinetic energy. In the initial situation, nothing is moving. So the initial kinetic energy will be zero. For initial gravitational potential, in the initial situation, mass one is at the zero level, so it does not contribute gravitational potential energy. However, mass two is a height h, above the zero level. So I'm going to put in initial gravitational potential energy is equal to that of mass two, M2GH, right? Again, mass one is not contributing gravitational potential. For final kinetic energy, both masses are moving. So both masses contribute kinetic energy in the final situation. So for mass one, we would have one half mass one, B final squared for mass two, we add one half mass two V final squared. In the final situation, mass two, we're just going to say it's so close to the zero level that we can neglect its gravitational potential energy. So we add in only the gravitational potential energy of mass one, which would be M one GH. Now we have completed step two in the handout. Since we did step 2a, we're also going to use step 3a if all forces are conservative. Now, the handout gives us two different versions of the same equation. These two equations are mathematically equivalent. My personal preference is the lower one. So I'm going to use this version of the equation for conservation of mechanical energy. But I'm going to skip this middle term for change in spring potential energy because no springs in this problem. So we then have change in gravitational potential energy plus change in kinetic energy equals zero. Change in anything is the final value minus the initial value. So change in gravitational potential energy would be gravitational potential final minus gravitational potential initial and plus kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial, all of that equals zero. So now let's just make our substitutions from the list here. So initial kinetic energy is zero. Final gravitational potential energy, M1GH. Initial gravitational potential energy, M2GH. Plus final kinetic energy, I'll just take this and copy it down although I'm going to combine terms just to save you some space. So I have one half mass one plus mass two times the final squared equals zero. 
Now I'm solving for V final here. So I'm gonna just start by taking this term here and moving it to the right. Now, when I do that, instead of explicitly writing a minus sign in front of this, I'm going to switch the order of the terms. So I have one half quantity mass one plus mass two V final squared equals. So move this to the right and I'm going to use the minus sign to reverse the order of the terms. So solving for V final now, I'm going to take M1 plus M2 over two and move it to the right side. So I have V final squared equals, okay, this thing, but it moved to the other side so it gets flipped over. Now for this expression here, there is a common factor of GH. So I'm gonna pull that out, stick it there. And then what's left would be M2 minus M1. All right, now I'm going to take the square root and make my substitutions. Actually, one more algebraic step before substituting. So I'm gonna have V final is two GH M2 minus M1 over M1 plus M2 square root. Okay, now substituting to 9.8 meters per second squared. H was given as 40 centimeters. I'm gonna convert that to meters. It is 0 0.40 meters. Okay, M2 minus M1. I'm just gonna take the difference. 500 minus 450 is 50. I'm gonna put that as grams and you'll see why in a moment. Then in the denominator, I have the sum. 450 plus 500, which is 950 grams. Now notice here, grams cancels against grams. So I don't have to worry about the unit here, which is why I didn't bother converting to kilograms. Anyways, if you take what remains here and put it in your calculators, I hope you find V final equals 0 0.64, but what unit? Well, look at what we have in here. We have meters squared over seconds squared. Take the square root of that, and we get meters per second, which is the appropriate unit for a speed. And now we have done our second example problem using conservation of mechanical energy.